Good evening all. Well, welcome to the June 2018 Media Bureau Legislative Meeting. Please stand and join me in at the Pledge of Allegiance for a flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for joining us tonight. We got underway a little bit late tonight because before tonight's meeting, we met in executive session and we were discussing a lawsuit that was brought against the borough by the Brumos Lake Country Club. Um, all right, so uh, we have a couple of housekeeping matters to take care of. We have two sets of minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the workshop meeting minutes from May of 2018 as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. There is. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no call for discussion, all those in favor of approving the May 2018 workshop meeting minutes as submitted, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. And as well, we have a set of council meeting minutes from this past month. Do I hear a motion to approve those as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? There is no call for discussion. All those who favor uh, approving the May 2018 council meeting minutes as submitted, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. All right, now we come to the time of the evening where we invite members of the public, should they wish, to come to the microphone. Uh, if there's something on your mind you'd like to talk to us about, please do so. But remember, you have to tell us your name and where you live. Hi, I'm Stephanie Gaborio. I live on Park Sage Lane, and I'm here as part of Friends of Glen Confidence Park. And I have two announcements tonight, and the first is about our uh, summer concert series, which starts this Saturday. Our summer concerts in the park, they are free and family friendly. The first one is Tiffany Jones, and she does retro soul and jazz. And we also have lined up uh, for the summer Mutlu, a soulful singer-songwriter, the Delco Symphony Brass Quintet, that will be uh, performing classical music on August 25th. And, and on September 8th, Sweetbriar Rose does uh, gypsy jazz. Um, so we're very excited starting this weekend. And because of the loss of the spectacular White Oak on the Sledding Hill, which provided a lot of shade. We have moved the concerts back one hour this year. They used to be from 5 to 6.30, and now they'll be 6 to 7.30, so that the sun can set a little bit more and hopefully not melt the audience. Um, <laughs> so we're very excited about that, and we're really grateful. Um, Media Recreation has been a really supportive sponsor ever since our very first concert back in 2012. And uh, we also have got a grant from the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts and some uh, loyal restaurant sponsors, Diego's, Seven Stones Cafe, Sheree Punjab, and Sterling Pig um, are each sponsoring one of our concerts. So we're very grateful to them and to Delaware County Parks and Recreation who support us in a lot of other ways and allow us to have the concerts. And so additionally this year, we have a late breaking event, which I'd like to invite Zubair with the Media Business Authority up. And uh, we are jointly doing with, um, and this is with the Media Arts Council, Friends of the Providence Park and the Media Business Authority, we are holding a movie under the stars on July 4th, Wednesday, July 4th, and we'll be showing The Princess Bride in the <laughs> Providence Park, free of charge. Obviously, it has to get dark. We're thinking around 8, 40, between 845 and 9. Then we'll begin. We'll have some shorts from the Media Film Festival and then show The Princess Bride, and uh, sort of details are still emerging, so we will. Be publishing more about that in the next few days, but hand it over to Zubair. Yeah, we are basically one voice, and that's what we are trying to do is to uh, have a collaboration of different groups uh, getting together and uh, trying to do some things together. As you know, uh, Media Rec, we will get uh, a, a report from the Media Rec, so I didn't want to step on any toes. So they do a great job with the kids in the morning, but we, ever since the fireworks had stopped, um, happening in media, we decided that we needed to do something in, in the evening. So um, uh, this idea came uh, through with uh, Jillian, mm -hmm. and she talked to uh, Stephanie, and, and um, so I know it's a last minute thing, but uh, we're going to do a lot of Facebook and, and social media blasts, and, um, and with uh, Stephanie's uh, expertise, I think we'll get the word out. But we wanted to come and invite and let people know that to please come and 
uh, it will be a lot of fun. We have already uh, acquired the, the uh, screen and the uh, permission from the uh, from the county uh, to use their facilities. We'll have a, a bathroom uh, um, delivered there, and we'll have booths for uh, all three organizations. <coughs> and the fun part is I left it for the last is uh, that one of the booths will have an apple pie and scoop ice cream will provide the ice cream. Wow. So we are going to have that as a dessert for later on and we're going to be charging five dollars um, for a slice of pie and an ice cream. And all those proceeds, uh, if there's any money left over, <laughs> i keep my fingers crossed, but we will divide those proceeds between the three groups. And we just want uh, the council's uh, blessing mm -hmm. and uh, hope all of you can come with your families and join us. So what time did you say? It's a quarter of nine or nine o'clock because it's still eight o'clock. It's still light out there. So we want to make sure that, that it gets dark. So we've been watching actually the, when the sun goes down. So it would be around nine o'clock. But there's no mass gathering permit required from the borough uh, because it is uh, going to be the county facilities and um, we're going to be informing the uh, police just to make them aware of it, to uh, you know just to go by, and we are arranging uh, a different parking at the um, at the Penn Medicine at the Penn Medicine that is right there next door, and Stephanie had worked with them before, and they had given us the permission to do this event, and then also is the uh, the church, the um, the you know they have uh, on Front Street. Um, the, yeah, so, uh, they uh, also have given us the permission to park there. So we'll have some, some signage there so people, you know, most of the people we were thinking that they would just walk to, uh, to the park and uh, bring their blankets and, and themselves and, and the kids and have a good time. Okay. So we're asking people to start the day at Burrell Field and end the day at Glen Covenant's Park, July. Have you made any efforts to notify residents who are nearby that there's going to be a movie? It's a, it sounds like a wonderful event, but uh, there are some folks that uh, probably will be a bit surprised to find that there is a movie in their backyard. Which is a, a great thought, and uh, since the plans just came together this week, we have not yet, but we will. I think that uh, we will get a hand-delivered uh, hand letter. Yeah, we have letters that we um, usually and post on the apartments over the uh, State Street. But we'll use that same letter, letting them know that there, you know, there will be a movie showing and, and uh, um, to, uh, to sure. respect Park's Edge, West Street, up to right, all that uh, 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 neighboring uh, okay, uh, good. Uh, people. So this way they, they don't get surprised. Stuff that you can get the word out while you're there. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds very much. wonderful event. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, that is great to hear, and I, I think that uh, we might have some more news about upcoming events. Uh, Mr. Tay, why don't you let us know what it is that we should know? Yes, speaking of upcoming events, um, my name is George Tay, 319 West 3rd Street, and I am one of the three organizers of the very first, first annual Media Hometown Cycling Classic. <laughs> Uh, the day is June 30th. It is an all-day USA Cycling sanctioned race event. Uh, it will be taking place right in uh, media from Front Street to 6th Monroe Jackson. We've done two um, hand-delivered fire drops so far amongst all the residents who would possibly be affected by um, street closures or parking restrictions. And we've had two informational meetings also, in which we've had uh, a daytime meeting where we invited residents and business folks, and tonight's event, uh, the evening event for residents. So uh, in addition to our website, which is www.hometownclassic.bike, uh, our Facebook page, our Instagram feed, and our Twitter feed. Uh, we feel like we've um, done our best to try and 
to make sure that the residents are aware. And we certainly want to invite everyone in town to come out and spectate at our event. It's going to be a spectacularly entertaining thing. Uh, we're going to also be hosting on the borough property uh, a race village where we'll have some of our um, sponsors uh, with food and beverage. Um, so uh, I'm here on behalf of myself, uh, Tom Peacock, and Dave Lamb, and our 19 sponsors to say thank you very, very much to Council for your support over the many months that it's taken us to get this together. We certainly want to invite each one of you to come and attend the event. We're really looking forward to it, and just thank you very much for your help in making this wonderful spectator friendly thing happen for the residents of Newton. Well, thank you, George. I, I feel as if we're the ones who ought to be thanking yeah. you uh, for bringing this event to me uh, in our very small way. I think that we could, we could provide some level of help, but it's been your elbow grease that has made this thing work up to this point. So I guess that's my way of saying that if this thing works out great, you get all the work. Um, and we hope that it does work out very, very well. Thank so you. that's a week from this coming Saturday. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, so are, you, are, you, are you still looking for volunteers to help with the event, or are you pretty set? We, love, we would love to have more volunteers. And how do people, do, how do people sign up? Uh, people can go to our website, and it's a very simple click-through to the volunteer section, and you can select the any of the many three-hour windows that are available to help us. And um, in addition to um, helping out the bike race, you get a really cool t-shirt for free. <laughs> and uh, it will look similar to this, uh, but it will be a, a fluorescent, very official fluorescent color with the word uh, volunteer written across the back. I love the graphics. It's really well done. Yes. That, the graphics were done by Fiori Design. and. Speaking of our 19 sponsors, they are all local. So this is a, a locally supported event. And uh, we're really proud of the fact that this is, this is media at its best. This is media coming together as a, as a strong supporter of a really uh, interesting and health and fitness oriented event. So we hope to see all the residents there. So um, I am excited about this. I think it's wonderful. And I received little notices on my, yeah. But I am wondering, did any of the residents go to your meeting and say, now how are we managing getting my cars, all the cars for my block somewhere? Uh, yes, we did. We've had one uh, request for information regarding where do I park my car. Yeah. And We've made, we've made um, a survey of the area and we identified areas and made suggestions for folks who need to move their car for the, for the day of the race, potential places to, to move it to. We've also notified a wider geography of residents via notices that um, some of their neighbors may be parking on their block as a result of the that required street closures, and to expect the fact that there'll be a few more cars parked. And then, uh, as a final uh, effort to make sure that this is, it treads as lightly as possible on residents, on the uh, very early on Friday morning before the race, we will be distributing underneath every windshield wiper of every car that's parked in the course a reminder that um, we'll be need needing to move all the cars for the race and giving them uh, information on how to contact us uh, with a phone number and um, just trying to do our best to make sure that everybody knows what the plan is and uh, is aware of it. All right, well, wonderful. A week from this coming Saturday, we have a big time bike race here in media. Thrills, chills, and no spills, right? Uh, that's what That's what <laughs> So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, George.
All right, does anybody else wish to address council at this time? Seeing that there are no other takers. Oh, there's Zubair, you're back to the microphone. Hi, I'm Zubair, another hat. Uh, my name is Zubair Khan, I'm the executive director for the Media Business Party, and I have been a little busy, so I had promised Lisa that I was going to give her my report, which I didn't. So I um, um, was asked to uh, talk about last week. We had uh, four events in media. We started out with Media Art Show from, from the Town Talks, um, which, was, um, which was not that well attended, but there are some other events that were going on. And then we had Dining Under the Stars, number seven. And then on Friday night, we had Media Five by Race. And Saturday, we had the uh, State Street Blues Road. So the schedule was pretty full last week. And we uh, did a tremendous job with uh, getting uh, CBS to come and do live broadcasts. And I'm sure you might have uh, caught some of those. And uh, with Bob's uh, help, he was able to uh, get some rating from uh, Nielsen. Um, and um, our attendance showed close to a million people or so. So I, uh, close to two million, close to two million people that watched uh, Fox, CBS, and ABC. They were all fighting for spots to uh, shoot media. So we we're very fortunate, we we're very lucky. And um, somebody is doing right things and, and, and a lot of credit also goes to the council because you have been very supportive and, um, and the residents, they come uh, every dining room of the stars. I see some of the faces at the dining room of the stars. I can see uh, Sarah was just telling me that she was there with her friends. So the dining room of the stars has taken uh, a, a shape of its own and it just, even though it's, the weather is iffy, but we are just drawing people and it's just really, really proud of them. So we are trying to make sure that the event is safe and the police are doing a fantastic job, highway department, I cannot thank them enough. Um, so everybody from, from the council uh, office and, and, and you, you folks and, and residents um, have made this happen and I think we, are, we should be all very proud. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank All right. Thank you, Zubair. Um, it appears to be the end of public comment to the floor for this uh, segment of the evening. Uh, before we move over to our professional reports, uh, I'd like to uh, remind everyone who uh, has not yet uh, registered to receive the Media Borough's new e-newsletter uh, to do that uh, as soon as you can. Um, if you go on the borough website, you'll see in the front page under what's new that there is a link there. It's a very simple form to fill out uh, your name, your address, and uh, with that you will get every month an e-newsletter from the borough, which is just full of all sorts of good information about your community. Uh, so events that are going on, as well as uh, what's going on legislatively. So you get a, a bit of a recap of uh, what's going on in terms of development, for example. And uh, it's a great way of, of, getting, uh, of getting good, solid information about your community that will land on your electronic doorstep every month. So uh, please just take the few seconds that is needed to uh, fill out that form on your computer, and uh, you will be getting the e-newsletter from that point forward. All right, so let's move along to the uh, to our reports. Uh, Mr. Matson is not here tonight, so he's not here to deliver his report. He has delivered that to us by way of, uh, of writing. Um, it's consistent with his previous reports. Uh, so uh, we'll then move over to the solicitor for his report. Uh, thank you. I don't have anything to report tonight. Any questions for Mr. Scott? Hearing on, Mr. Mayor, your report for the evening. Yes, uh, <coughs> the police department had a total of 763 complaints during the month of May. Um, and uh, I want to give an economic development update report on uh, what we're doing with the restaurants, uh, the retail, and the theater. Um, as many of you know, uh, we have a play coming from the media theater called Tommy and Me. It opens on August 8th. Um, it's 
story of Ray Dininger and Tommy McDonald, the former uh, Eagles player, and their relationship over the years and how he got him in the uh, Hall of Fame. It's a, a play that is going to draw a lot, an awful lot of interest. Uh, it opens on August 8th, and that night we're going to have an Eagles rally um, in the middle of dining under the stars to bring attention to it. Uh, we expect all 18 shows to sell out. It's already, with just some uh, radio discussion, they've already sold $20,000 worth of tickets in the last week or so. Um, the opening night, uh, we're going to, uh, the guest for opening night is going to be Dick Vermeil. Uh, former head coach of the Eagles, Super Bowl winner, uh, Super, Super Bowl of the Eagles, and also Super Bowl from uh, St. Louis. But he's going to lead our little rally along with Ray Dittinger. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to give you some of the other hosts that are going to be there for uh, their names that sports fans know, so it's going to be an attraction. And then how it's going to work between the theater, the restaurants, and the uh, and the retail. So other guests we have are Bill Berge, former uh, All-Pro um, defensive linebacker for the Eagles. Bill Martelli will be there one night, and they do a post-play. Play going now in 15 minutes. They do a post um, like conversation with the fans that are all sitting in there, the 400 and something in the theater. Um, Bill Martelli, I said, uh, Ron Jaworski, I ran into him, and Ray had already lined him up. Howie Roseman, who's the general manager of the Eagles. Uh, will be there by Sakahima, uh, Yuki Washington, and a bunch of others. So how this works as far as economic development goes is <clears throat> the theater is selling the tickets. So the theater is getting the emails of everybody that's going to be there because the tickets are going to be sent to them electronically or um, the information will be. So what they will get from the theater is not only the ticket, but they'll get a list of all the participating restaurants. I think there's a total of 14 now. They're giving a 10% discount on dinners that night. So they'll get something that'll show each a list of each of the restaurants, their telephone number, a little click here for something the restaurant may want to have, like maybe a little video or something that will make it more appetizing, so to speak, for them to go. The whole idea is to make sure that people, when they come to this show, don't just come to go to the show. They come to do at least two things. They come to the show and they go to dinner or they go to retail. We're going to also include the retail establishments too on the list so they know which ones will be open, depending on whether it's a matinee or, or depending on where it's in, uh, whether it's meeting. Uh, in talking to the theater, we think that this will carry over a little bit into Sweeney Todd, uh, which is the show that comes in the fall, but it'll really uh, help with uh, Julius Caesar and some of the others that are coming uh, later in the year, where this crowd of, uh, let's say, 9,000 people that come to the show will get used to dining and watching the show. So it's a work in progress. Uh, Stephanie, who just left, is doing a great job coordinating it. And we think it's going to be a success and hopefully a model to get people to do more than one thing when they come. Um, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Does anyone have any questions for the mayor? But hearing none, we'll move along to the council committee reports. Properties, public works, and fire, which is usually delivered by our colleague, Paul Robinson, uh, will not be delivered by him this evening because he is away on business. Uh, it's a rare occasion, but uh, every now and then, uh, all of us have obligations outside of council that uh, unfortunately pull us away. Um, and tonight is one of those nights for Mr. Robinson. Uh, he has one item, and uh, it is Resolution 2018-31. It's with regard to application for the Supplemental County Aid. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, I understand that this is pretty straightforward. Would you mind uh, sure. just outlining it for us? Yes, so the county has uh, made available to all 49 municipalities some additional funds for pothole repair. So in the case of the borough, it's based on a formula of number of road miles as well as population. Uh, the amount that's available for the borough is $2,892. In order to receive those funds, uh, Borough Council must authorize a, uh, by a resolution an application to be submitted, so it sim simply would be allowing us to do that. Uh, the Public Works Director has identified some costs associated with those potholes uh, that they've already completed, so it would be a nice addition to uh, their budget for 2019. All right, in uh, Mr. Robinson's absence, I'll make the motion that uh, we 
uh, approved, resolu uh, approved resolution 2018-31, which will authorize us to apply for supplemental county aid for street repair uh, potholes. I'll move that for now today. So motion has been made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Okay, so I'll call question number three. I wasn't prepared. Sorry. Um, all those in favor of resolution 2018-31 for the application for a supplemental county aid, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay. Passage unanimously. Um, and as uh, uh, Councilman Robinson is uh, uh, used to saying, um, as to the uh, as to the firehouse, the fire department, uh, it, it's it is um, a wonderful facility facility uh, with wonderful persons who provide wonderful service, and uh, they are always on the lookout for those who wish to join them. We recently were their guests. Um, we had uh, two of our workshop sessions at the, the firehouse, and uh, they were quite busting with pride at, at, at all of the equipment that they have there. Uh, they really are a top-notch outfit. Um, they could use some more members, though. And uh, one thing that uh, really impressed me was how collegial they work, how much it, it is, how much it feels like a, you're part of a team when you're on, uh, when you're a member of uh, the media fire department. So uh, if you want that feeling of doing something good for your community, of being something larger than yourself, of being with a bunch of really great guys who are like-minded, it, 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 hustle on down there and talk to them. Um, and uh, you might find that you've got uh, uh, a, a developing hobby in your hands. Um, okay, so um, I think that uh, completes that portion of the agenda. So we'll move along to Councilman Lisa Johnson, Media Business Authority, Historic, Public Safety, and Civil Service. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement, or just a comment. The Media Historical Society recently voted in a new president. The old president, Kathy LaRusso, decided to retire from the Media Historical Society after 12 years. And um, Fran Shelton is taking over as the president of the Media Historical Society. And she's very energetic and go-getting and has wonderful new ideas. So um, I asked her to come talk to us in a couple months once they have it a little more organized and what they decide they're going to be and do to uh, tell us. But um, I just wanted you to know that they're looking for volunteers. They'd love to have anyone who'd like to be part of Media's Historical Society to join, join them. So they meet on the third Monday evenings at the Borough Hall second floor conference room at 7.30. So if you'd like to check it out, I, I suggest you do. It's a great bunch of people. Um, as far as my agenda is concerned, there's a resolution 2018-32, uh, the DCED-MTF traffic signal grant application. So I'll read the first couple sentences. It says, be it resolved that Media Borough of Delaware County hereby requests a multimodal transportation fund grant of $189,000 $350 from the Commonwealth Finance Financing Authority to be used for the project Pedestrian Safety Enhancements at Media Borough's Signal Intersection. This has to do with making them audible for people who are blind. Um, we'd, like, we'd like to make um, the, some of the intersections more safe and usable for our blind people, visitors, residents. And um, so we're making this request to um, apply for the grant. It says also be it further resolved that Media Borough does hereby designate Brian C. Hall, the council president, and Jeffrey A. Smith, the borough manager, as the officials to execute all documents and agreements between Media Borough and the Commonwealth Financing Authority to facilitate and assist in obtaining the requested grant. So I make this in a form of a motion to approve this resolution. Second. Motion's been made and has been seconded. Any discussion on the motion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of approving on resolution 2018-32, which would allow us to apply for uh, grant money for traffic signal uh, enhancement, uh, the amount of $189,350, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, the second resolution, 2018-33, is the, the appointment of Nancy Fermanac as an alternate to the Civil Service Commission. The Public Safety Committee met with Nancy um, at our last meeting, which was the end of last month, and talked with her and found out a little bit about her. Nancy lives in the borough on London Street, and uh, she was interested in giving back, and she's very proud of our police force and would like to contribute her time to helping them on the Civil Service Commission. So I make the approval of the resolution in the form of the motion. Second. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving resolution 2018-32, which would appoint Nancy Fermanick as an alternate as an alternate to the Civil Service Commission, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next Sorry. Say the same name. Yeah, the next one is resolution 2018-34, and this is the appointment of John Fermanac as an alderman to the Civil Service Commission. John is the husband of Nancy, and he also came to the Public Service Public Safety Committee meeting last month and talked to us about his interest in joining the uh, Civil Service Commission, and he too feels the same way as Nancy. They, um, he wants to give back and appreciates the work of the, our police force. So um, the public, I guess I forgot to mention this the last time, but the Public Safety Committee um, recommends that we appoint John and Nancy um, as, a, as an alternate to the Civil Service Commission. So I make that in a form of a motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Just that I've known Fermanacs for years, and they're great people. I'm so pleased that they decided to step forward and do this service for the community. All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving resolution 2018-34, which would appoint John Fermanac as an alternate to the Media Federal Civil Service Commission, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. This next one, I might need some help from you, Jeff, to authorize the solicitor to draft and advertise an amendment to the police drop ordinance based on the most recent collective bargaining agreement. Sure. Um, the drop has been in place for a while, and the FOP successfully negotiated uh, two things. One is increasing from a three to a five year drop, and number two, uh, at, prior to the most recent contract the council approved, it was those employees hired prior to uh, 1113. Now it would apply to anyone hired prior to 1118. So, in order for those two things to be incorporated uh, as a follow up to the collective bargaining agreement that was successfully negotiated, uh, the, the drop ordinance should match that. So, in order for that to happen, the solicitor would be authorized to draft that advertisement and council would consider taking action at a later date on that ordinance. Okay, thanks. So I'd like to make a motion to authorize our solicitor to draft and advertise the amendment to the police drop ordinance. The motion has been made and I have heard a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of authorizing our solicitor to draft and advertise the amendments to the police drop ordinance as outlined by Council Lisa Johnson, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the police sally port bid results. Um, the police force is interested in building a, a structure um, in front of the entrance into the police um, quarters. And we had budgeted 165000 originally and then bumped it up to 225 based on getting some feedback and saying that we couldn't get what we needed for 165000 
And unfortunately, the result, bid results just came back recently, and they were all approximately a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, far, far too much. I think um, I hope we all agree, and I'd like to recommend that we don't um, award the contract to the lowest bidder, but we do have to notify them by July 15th that. Um, we are not going to award the contract. So I'm not sure about making a motion or or just recommending that we report back to the lowest bidder that we are not going to um, award the contract. And then we're gonna rethink what we want and need and try to get what the police force needs, but at a much lower cost. Mr. Yeah. Scott, do we need to take any action? Yeah, motion to reject the bid. Motion to reject yeah, the bid. Yeah, so that they're not all, you know, okay. holding out their, their bond anymore. Okay, so I make a motion that we reject the lowest bidder's bid. Um, you reject all bids. All bids. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it was only the lowest bidder one we would consider. So whether we accept it or reject it. All bids. Okay. If you reject the low bid, you're in essence leaving all the other bids on the table, okay. which I think is not the message. Okay. The message is you're going to be doing Okay, so I make a motion to reject all of it. <laughs> Second. It's great discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, the motion to reject all bids with regard to construction of a police and sally port, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, so our mass gathering permit applications, as you might know, they are for closing the town streets for uh, specific events. And we have one event that I'm sure you, everyone knows is the Dining Under the Stars event. And um, there's been an amendment submitted to close, this is uh, based on uh, safety concerns uh, by the police force, but we'd like to um, document this closure of Jackson through to Monroe. It's, um, it's from Jackson to Church and the egress to and from Church Street parking lot. It's around the Trader Joe's. And it just makes it unsafe to have part of that um, block open and people not realizing that it's open and they end up walking down the street. And so the police um, would like to make that a permanent closure <coughs> under this mass gathering permit. So I'd make that an important motion. Second. Motions are made, it's been seconded twice. Um, any discussion on the motion? Lisa, isn't it true that uh, uh, Trader Joe's and the other businesses there were pulled and they didn't have any objection? That's true. Yeah, they're, they're fine with it. They understand the issue and they're fine. Uh, that's all. Okay. All right, all those in favor of uh, approving the amendment to the mass gathering permit as described by Councilman Lisa Johnson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Another one, this is a, a mass gathering permit that we've seen in years past. The First Baptist Church of Media is holding a vacation Bible school be between July 9th and the 13th. And they set up at 6 p.m. The event starts at 6.30 and then stops at 8.30 and they break down by 9. So they'd like to um, close Third Street from Jackson to Monroe for this event. So I'd like to make a motion to approve this mass gathering permit. Is so there a second? There is a second. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the First Baptist Church of Media's Vacation Bible School mass, mass gathering permit application, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, number seven, is a mass gathering permit application for the Eagles kickoff rally. However, I'd like to um, table this, I guess is proper term, to, until we talk about it during public safety meeting next week. So then we'll bring it back to the council for voting. There's no need to table if there's just no motion made. So okay. we'll wait until. Okay. But I have a replacement for it last minute entry here that um, there's been a beer garden request um, by uh, 
Sterling Pig, a local brewery in our town. They'd like to set up a beer garden during the bicycling race we just, the bicycling event we just heard about um, on Saturday, June 30th. And they, they would um, set this beer garden up on uh, the borough's parking lot where they're gonna have the registrants of the bike race here and uh, tents with lots of information and again beer garden and a couple other restaurants would like to serve food as well they um, were required to show an insurance uh, document which they have done and also have a license by the LCB to do the beer garden which they have and have shown us as well so um, everything's in good order to um, have this beer garden on June 30th. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the beer garden request. And so a second. Motion to make a second. Did any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Scott, yes. uh, I saw some emails going back and forth to me. Is the borough now listed as? Uh, An additional insured, yes. Okay, good. They, they provided what I asked for. All right, good. Um, so, uh, you're satisfied yes all right good um, all those in favor of approving a mass gathering permit for a beer garden during the uh, bike race please say aye uh, aye. aye those opposed please say nay the motion passes unanimously okay thank you that's all I have all right thank you any questions for councilwoman Lisa Johnson we'll then move along to fair trade farmers market shade tree and the environmental advisory council that's uh, Councilman Amy Johnson. Thank you. Um, so first on, first and only thing that's on my agenda um, is, as we all know, we have many trees in our borough, some of which are large, beautiful, old trees. Um, so in an effort to uh, broadly evaluate the individual health of the trees within the borough, um, and also provide our Shade Tree Commission with a much more update and in-depth uh, information regarding specific at-risk trees. Um, the Shade Tree Commission is recommending to conduct a borough-wide tree survey. So they would begin that work um, as soon as we hopefully all vote upon it tonight and approve it. Um, and it would take, you know, several months, maybe even over a year, as you can imagine, there's a lot of trees um, to survey. So. Um, the cost for that um, would be $22.50 an hour, not to exceed $2,500 per precinct. Am I correct on that, Jeff, right? Yes, $2,250, grand total of $9,000. Okay, great. So I'm asking council for your approval um, on the recommendation from Shade Tree to conduct a borough-wide tree survey. Making that a motion? She has. Second. There is a second on the motion. Is there discussion on the motion? I have a question. Um, Amy, when you say the trees in the borough, do you mean just the publicly owned trees or private? Public. Oh, just public. Just public. Okay. So and no, no one privately owned trees. No one should expect or hope that someone's going to. That's correct. That's okay. correct. Yes. Just our street trees. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving nine thousand dollars for uh, the Shade Tree Commission to conduct a borough-wide tree survey of. Uh, Borough tree, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, under EAC, um, they'd like me to make an announcement that um, because the e recycling and shredding event is such a popular, well attended event, they are hosting another one in July this um, coming month. Um, and uh, with it's a uh, group effort of Nether Providence Media and Swarthmore. It's a it's an electronics recycling and shredding event, Saturday, July 28th from 9 to 1, held at the in the Acme parking lot at 527 East Baltimore Pike. You can recycle almost anything with a plug for free. Old style TVs and CRT monitors do require a $30 deposit fee. I'm sorry, how much? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. $30 disposal for those items um, and then anything you want to shred documents with sensitive information 
Um, and so the trucks will be on the Beatty Road side of the shopping center. Um, and if there were any questions, um, you can contact um, dgrady at netherprovidence.org. So um, please attend that event, recycle all of those electronics, and shred all those documents. Um, and then just another reminder that um, the Media Farmers Market season has begun. Um, it's every Sunday from 9 to 1 p.m. on Edgemont Street uh, between State and Front. Um, the market has been going very well. Um, keep seeing new and new shoppers, but we'd love to see more. Um, so come out, support your local farmers. Um, find some really neat and different kinds of products. Walk lots of different vegetables and fruits, but also other gourmet things. There's an amazing mushroom vendor. Um, last week I really enjoyed some local cherries, and my kids love Firehouse Donuts. Um, so yes, try to get the mouse to water there. But I think that concludes my report. All right. Are there any questions for you guys? I'm sorry, I wasn't writing fast enough. What time did you say the recycling event on the 9 to 1. 9 to 1, yes. Thanks. Always popular. In the court. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll move along to community development. So our, our architecture review board and the media arts council, that's my portion of the agenda. Uh, I've got uh, four items for legislative action tonight. Uh, the first one is a zoning hearing uh, board application. This is for a variance uh, and a special, a special exception plus uh, variance. Um, it involves a property that is just north of Holly House on uh, North Providence Road. It's a dentist's office. Uh, it is a zoned residential. Uh, the dentist's office though has been there since forever. So it uh, is a, a, a pre-existing pre non-conforming use. Uh, so even though it's a business, uh, it is permitted to be there because uh, uh, it's been there before our zoning code came into being. Um, the the uh, ownership of the practice would like to expand it. Uh, they want to expand it in such a way that uh, the building would double in size. Um, it, this does not pose any problems in terms of the size of the building or its relationship to any of the boundaries. But because it's a pre-existing pre non-conforming use, there are limits as to what they can do as a matter of right. So I understand that Mr. Mr. Scott, they are permitted to increase the size by 25 cents by special exception. Anything beyond that has to be done by variance. Correct. Um, so the, uh, the, the analysis for us is whether or not what's being requested or the, the, the variance that's being requested runs afoul of uh, health, safety, welfare of the borough. Uh, the Pl Planning Commission has heard this application and they've decided that it does not. They've recommended the borough not oppose what's being requested. Um, uh, I should add to this that uh, the number of parking spaces will remain the same. The uh, exits and entrance will remain the same. Uh, there actually will decrease the amount of impermeable surface. So that's a good thing. Uh, so um, I agree with uh, the Planning Commission on this one. And uh, I think that uh, we should not send our solicitor, spend the money to send our solicitor to oppose this. But uh, if anyone believes otherwise, you have five seconds to make a motion. <laughs> All right, silence is golden. We will move along then. Um, item number two, we have a gentleman here in the uh, waiting patiently in the audience, uh, the sole person left. Uh, this is a preliminary final land, de land development of a property that borders the borough complex. In fact, it's behind us. Um, it is a, a three-story uh, three uh, uh, building in the, in the borough's office district that's currently used, I think entirely as residential at the present time. And next door to it is a, very, it's a squat little building that for a number of years was used as an ocularist office. Uh, the, these, these properties have now been, uh, been, have been bought, and uh, the idea is to develop them together uh, in, in a way that it's going to be part office and it will be part residential. Um, do I have that right, or it's, it's all office? It's all office, that's right. It's, it's, it's all office, my, my, my apologies. Um, but bottom line is that uh, there, it doesn't require any zoning relief at all. 
so uh, what, it, what it needs is approval of the preliminary and final land development. And I think that there's only, I think there are two waivers here, uh, Mr. Scott, and correct me if I'm wrong. One is with the height of the curb. Yeah. I think, and the other is uh, to do this. Preliminary and final. Correct. Preliminary and final at, 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 one, at, at one fell swoop as opposed to uh, twice. Right. Um, and uh, Planning Commission has uh, heard this at, has heard this application. They recommend that Council approve uh, the uh, the application. Um, I would make that subject to any uh, the satisfaction of any conditions that our solicitor or our engineer might see fit. Um, and uh, with that, I'll make that as a motion. Motion is made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the preliminary final land development application for 28-30 East 3rd Street, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. All right, good luck to you. Long day's journey tonight. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Good, -bye. Bye -bye. good, thanks. Welcome to our neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, item number three is uh, something that we don't often see, but uh, when it uh, comes up, uh, we need to talk about it. Um, this involves a structure that is in one of media's historic districts, and uh, because it's within the historic district, any change must go through the Historic uh, Architectural Review, Review Board, and uh, the Historic Architectural Review Board <coughs> will then decide uh, whether or not uh, to recommend the borough to issue a certificate uh, of appropriateness concerning the changes. Um, th this particular building is one of recent uh, increased interest. It is the Hamilton <coughs> residence. Um, you might have heard over the past couple of months about the Appleton collection with the historic archives that has been busy putting together and revealing to the public. I, I think it was uh, received very, very warmly, and you can see the, the, uh, the images uh, the photographic images uh, that make up this collection at the library or up through the library's website. They're, they're, they're completely fascinating. You could spend hours looking at these uh, just trying to figure out where these images were um, or where they are now. Um, and it's also a great way of contrasting where we were with where we are at the present time. Uh, but uh, with that little detour into uh, historic byway, um, this particular building has a front porch that is in need of some repair. And that's what is being proposed here, uh, that the various elements of the front porch be repaired in a way that is consistent with the, uh, with the historic nature of the building. Uh, the Historic Architect Review Board agreed that these were appropriate uh, repairs to make, and uh, they recommended to us that we uh, issue a uh, certificate of appropriateness for uh, these uh, for these repairs. So um, I'll make that in the form of a motion. Motion's been made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Any discussion? Okay, so all those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, did you ask the questions? Yes. Okay. I, I do have one. Um, yes, sir. So now for this historic building, what we want to do is repair the porch, that's all. That's right. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving the application for, for a certificate of appropriateness for a front porch repair to 341 West State Street, please say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, please say nay. And those who passes unanimously. All right. The last item that I'm going to leave a little bit on. Uh, Mr. Smith, actually, we need a lot. <laughs> I'm going to rest my entire weight on Mr. Smith on this one. Uh, this is with the Assignment Design Services for the CMAC grant. So uh, the borough was successful in securing a $728,000 grant um, to essentially uh, install sidewalks throughout the borough, different locations that currently uh, do not have any type of sidewalk. So as part of that, uh, the requirement uh, of the plumbing agency is that the borough hire a design engineer to do a number of things. Um, so in order to do that, um, Karen, uh, who secured the grant, uh, reached out to uh, three qualified engineering firms, and the proposals that she received 
uh, based on the recommendation of Karen, as well as I believe uh, Kevin Madsen, is McMahon Associates out of XMPA. Uh, their base bid is 131.306. Um, they also have two alternatives. Uh, we won't know quite yet if they're going to be required. One has to do with environmental clearances. Second one has to, to do with right-of-way services. They may not be applicable, but in any event, um, the total amount uh, is $174,970. Um, so the request is to uh, make a proposal award to that engineering firm to start the process of uh, ultimately moving toward construction. So that's where we are right now. Uh, the total project cost is approximately 910,000, with 182,000 coming in the form of a borough match. It's been approved in this year's budget. Um, so that's where things are right now. Well, all right, uh, make that in the form of a motion that uh, we uh, uh, that uh, we award the, the proposal for the sidewalk design services to McMahon and Associates. Um, for up to one hundred seventy-four thousand and nine hundred seventy dollars. Motion to be is there a second? Second. Any discussion? On yeah, I just have a question about the, the alternates, Jeff. Now, yes. you, you all that know this better feel that it's appropriate to accept all those as well now and not not later. I mean, it, do we have to, it's all or none. In other words. My understanding, based on what Kevin, uh, Kevin, uh, Karen had indicated, is that would be the preference of the funding agency, just so they can get the wheels in motion. They will not do that work unless it turns out to be a requirement um, moving forward. So the preference is to do okay. exactly that, and then um, okay. certainly Karen and, and Kevin and the engineering firm will keep us posted um, on whether or not the two alternates are required, which may not be the case, but this way at least they're prepared and ready to go. So if the alternate work gets done, this engineering firm does it, right? Okay. Not, it. You're not going to go it. out to bid for a new They're going to do the whole thing. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, call the question. All those in favor of awarding um, the proposal for sidewalk design services uh, to engineer, to design engineer McMahon Associates in the total of one hundred seventy-four thousand nine hundred seventy dollars, please say aye. 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 Those in favor, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Shebang. Ball of wax. Whatever you're. But the law, the law preferred Latin phrases, um, but shebang works. Uh, all right, so I've got uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, the first announcement is with regard to the Media Arts Council. They are looking for a couple of new members, so if you are interested, uh, please let them know. Just go on their website and uh, contact them and let them, let them know that you have an interest and they will get back to you, but uh, they'll take it from there. Uh, the second item is uh, with regard to July 4th. Uh, July 4th is always a wonderful event, and uh, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Boy will talk about that at, at greater length. Uh, but uh, just as a reminder, it, this past October, the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania legislature uh, made changes to the fireworks laws in Pennsylvania. So uh, now uh, pretty much any type of, of firework is permitted. Um, if uh, you or someone that you love or someone that you know is sitting, going to have a fireworks display, uh, you may do so legally, but please use good sense and caution and keep the kids at a distance. Um, all right, that's all I have for tonight. Maybe with the July 4th weekend, Oh, that's right. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Amy Johnson has just reminded me that because of the July 4th week, we're going to move our workshop session uh, f uh, from that week to a different week. It would have fallen, I believe, on uh, July, uh, July 5. And uh, as you can well imagine, that's a difficult week for a lot of folks because they're out of town. So we decided that we would move the workshop session to a different day. And uh, the date we've uh, chosen is the 17th of July, which will be uh, a Tuesday. And uh, it will, uh, the meeting will begin at 6 p.m. So uh, if you're interested uh, in the, attending the next workshop session, that will be July 17th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m.? Yes, it'll be right at the uh, right, right after we finish off with the finance meeting. 
so those who are finance will be able to go from one meeting to the other meeting and uh, not have to sit around for an hour or two. So the same week legislative Yeah, it's the same week as our legislative session. If the 6 o'clock proves not to be workable, then we can change the time. But for now, let's just say 6 p.m. And uh, if, if that's going to be a problem, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll change that up, OK? OK. So we'll just get out of the books for now. Um, OK, so that's it. Any other questions for President Hall? All right, so as, uh, as advertised, Recreation and Board of Health. Thank you, Mr. President. Lawyer. Um, nothing from Board of Health. Board of Health will be meeting in July. I believe it's the 10th of the third meeting back the week, so I will hopefully have a report at the next legislative meeting about any events concerning uh, the Board of Health. Uh, regarding REC, a couple announcements. Um, summer camp will begin next week. Um, most weeks are filled capacity. I think they cap the number of campers at 30. Um, this year. Um, you can always go online to see if there are any openings, but uh, from what Larry Johnson said at the last rec meeting, things are pretty well booked, and that is uh, that's very encouraging. Um, movie nights. We had our first movie night, I believe it was the uh, the eighth that corresponded with the end of the year picnic for the elementary school, but there are still two upcoming. One will be July 14th, that will be Paddington 2. Paddington 2. So that will be um, Saturday, July 14th, that corresponds with the second Saturday. And then the other uh, movie night will be August 11th, and that will be Back to the Future, so that's kind of a retro night. And as the Greg pointed out for the first time, there are no cartoons in movie series uh, this year. They were all kind of live action, so. Although Paddington, I think that's a little you know, stop action game. Not a traditional cartoon, so for now, those are all at Burrell Field. Uh, begin at dusk, uh, whenever dusk happens to be those nights, and hopefully the weather will cooperate and they will uh, be well attended. Um, one of the Rex News members, Katie Dooley, has put together a Fitness in the Park series. Hopefully you've seen these flyers out around town. I think she's also put them on social media. Katie has reached out to a number of the local um, fitness studios. And beginning on Tuesday, July the 10th, and this will be from 7 until 8 p.m., Right up here next to the uh, top lot where the uh, open space is, there will be a free event for uh, borough residents. And um, that will run from July 10th through the week of August 21st on consecutive Tuesdays. So each week there will be a different studio and bring your yoga mats, bring um, your sneakers, and have a good fitness night down at the, uh, the lawn. So uh, very encouraged. It's a great new event that combined with a bike event it really has media pushing the whole fitness thing, so it's very, uh, very encouraging that Katie is able to do that. Um, July the 4th, as uh, President Hall said, and was indicated earlier, down at Burrell Field between 10 and 12 in the morning is the annual uh, July the 4th celebration. This is one of our big events. And as usual, it will be everything from bike decorating, from kids 0 through 12, decorate your bike and they'll be judged. Uh, face painting, um, there's always an inflatable water slide. There will be spin art. Uh, silly Joe doing the entertainment, hot dogs, drinks, um, so it's a great time. And as uh, Stephanie said earlier, you can start your morning at that end of the borough and then in the evening go down to um, Glencroft Park and see their movie. So that's always a really well attended event and Rec does a great job in putting it on and uh, hopefully it will be successful and the weather will cooperate. So uh, that will go well. And uh, that can, can concludes my report. Thank you. Any, any questions for Councilman Boyd? Councilman Boyd. Yes, so what are some of the examples of uh, fitness in the park besides yoga? Uh, tai Chi. Tai Chi? Um, tai Chi, something called planked, H I I T. I do not know what that means. I don't know what plank means. That's hard. Uh, Pilates, uh, bar A, B A R or something? Bar. Bar, okay. Yeah, my daughter always corrects me. Now. Bar is twice, July the 24th and then August 21st combined with Yoga Fusion. But anyway, there's quite a variety of events. It's not just your traditional aerobics. It's Tai Chi, yoga, lots of things. So. Okay, and the last thing is, are we going to, to uh, the Reading Phillies? No, not that reason. Oh, okay. I'd like to bring that up. I can suggest that to Paul and see if we can book a trip. Suggest. But uh, I will bring that up at the, at the next uh, rec meeting in July. And there's plenty of time to still do that. So that would be a, a great event. All right, any other questions? Very good. We'll move along to the finance and library. Councilman Boyd, sir. 
Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> uh, I have a light uh, agenda this evening. Uh, I have, for the library, the one thing I, I did note, I always like to look at the uh, announcements in, on the website before I speak to you. And for the tweens on September 27th, you can tie-dye pancakes. <laughs> now, last year, to look at the photograph, I mean, I think I would want some. They look like big Fruit Loops. So, anyway. Be there, be square, if you are a teen on the 27th of June, from 4 to 5. Um, turning to more uh, mundane topics, the budget. Uh, let's start with the payment of bills, item number one. For May, let's ratify the payment of these bills from the general fund, we, uh, $282,217.36. From the recreation fund, $3,323.17. From the capital fund, $82,897.48. I make that in the form of a motion. Motion's been made. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of payment of the borough's bills for the month of May 2018, as detailed by Councilman Williamson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, on the budget, uh, we're not quite halfway through the year, but for the May results, we're doing fairly well, um, as is typical, really, for the borough in the past several years. Uh, on the operating budget, we're in the revenue end of things. We're about 54% of uh, the total for the year. That's largely due to prepayment of, of, of some rents that we receive. And on the expense side, we're only at about 35% of our annual expenses. So the swing between those two is significant. So we have a, a somewhat of a cushion built into the budget. Things can change, though. So uh, through no, um, you know, without control of the borough of staff. So, but for right now, we're doing well. And the capital budget items seem to be uh, well on their way to being uh, started, and the uh, the funds starting to be expended. Another good note um, from the um, finance end of things is we have the results from our audit reviewed at the Finance Committee meeting on Tuesday. And this is kind of a, um, this is a character story really because we had a, we had a bit of a rough audit two years ago. Uh, we had, they call them findings. And when you get findings in your audit letter, that's never a good thing. And we had a number of them. And it really, in a sense, it was sort of a wake up call to the, um, finance end of the borough to sort of modernize some of their procedures, which they did forthwith. So within a year's time, the uh, nine uh, uh, findings that we had from last year, of them eight have been resolved, and the other one essentially will be resolved in this current year. So it's an excellent result. And you know, auditors by nature are not very enthusiastic folks. Well, I should take that back, but they are reporting to uh, government officials, they don't tend to be very enthusiastic, but they were very enthusiastic about how quickly the borough turned around uh, this, their, their, their audit results. So they were very complimentary. So I give the borough staff a lot of credit for, uh, and Councilwoman uh, Johnson for stepping in and fixing that. Yes, yes. And um, Mr. Smith, could you handle item number two? Go. Sure. Um, so Going back a good ways, I think like in the late 80s, uh, borough employees at that time, <coughs> excuse me, uh, were permitted to voluntarily contribute to a uh, retirement account. So there's probably maybe five or six individuals. They probably stopped in the mid 90s, but essentially, uh, the PSAB, Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs, is requesting that uh, an updated agreement happen. Uh, in discussing it with Solicitor Scott, he took a look at it. Uh, based on the fact there's no one contributing now, but there were in the past, uh, so his recommendation is in council, there's no downside, it's voluntary on the part of borough employees, so that he didn't see any downside to council take any action on this proposed agreement. So we're, uh, uh, the resolution is to agree to a contract with the, the uh, PSAB? It's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a continuation. It's their updated contract standard. It's nothing 
new and exciting. It's housekeeping. Okay, so I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. All right, there's a motion that has been made and has been seconded. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor then of uh, uh, entering an agreement to update uh, our contract with the PSAB with regard to the 457B plan, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. My last item is a, is a, uh, is a thank you. And that, um, Councilwoman Johnson and I have been lucky enough to be involved for a, about a, a year or two now with a small piece of land uh, uh, on Manchester across from the new Tiny Tees. The little pocket park that the borough received uh, as part of the development uh, package for the new Wawa. And uh, two weekends ago, uh, the media rotary came out for a volunteer planting day at the park. The results are smashing. But really my point is that it's wonderful to have the Rotary here in town and for them to have taken on this park as, as the, sort of their service project for at least this year and maybe continuing years. They've already contributed $5,000 towards some benches, which we have in stock. And as soon as I get my act together and, and as long as that, Johnson get our acts together, we'll place some out there and we'll have, a, uh, I think, an opening ceremony for the park. But it, it really, if you haven't been by since they did that, Take a look, it's really a nice result. That's all. Um, all right, yes. Uh, and, and we have a, a very active uh, and supportive rotary in this area. Uh, they, and as many of us know, they made a sizable uh, contribution to the building of our library, which brings me to uh, Marie Chiquetti. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you like to say a few words about uh, the okay. I thought I had mentioned her last In workshop. Not at the council meeting? Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of Monday, I think it was three Mondays ago, um, the library had their regular board meeting. And uh, prior to it, they had a reception for a retiring board member, Marie Sacchetti, who really has been very, very uh, important to the recent history of the library. Um, they've had a series of really excellent leaders over the past couple of years, including uh, Fran Shields and Robin Beaver, and Marie uh, has been there through that period as well, and she really took on the, uh, the rebuilding of the new library as her, as something that she was going to see happen. And, um, and anyone that came across her in the, those period of years knows how focused she was and effective she was at getting that job done. And, uh, but she retired, her term was up, and um, some of us were lucky enough to be there and make a few, I made some remarks on behalf of the borough about our appreciation for her uh, service to the, to the uh, library and, and, by, uh, and, by, and to the borough as well. Um, and uh, well, that's I think all I want to say for right now. Okay. Yep. Um, thank you. All right. Unless there are any other questions or comments for Councilman Williamson, we'll move along to personnel, public relations, and historical archives. That's uh, Councilman Sarah Dixon. Okay. So a um, couple of things. The uh, historical archives normally we would be meeting next Thursday, but it's been moved up to next Tuesday, um, and. Uh, They've got their um, web is um, media archives media historic archives org and that's their domain uh, that they, we own or they own I just got to say it that way. A woman was in doing research on William McKinley's wife uh, who went to um, Brook Hall Seminary in media. I didn't even know we mm -hmm. had it. Brook Hall Seminary and Media, but apparently that's the case. And, um, you know, we have a lovely, old, well, wonderful intern, Matt, Matt Dugan, has been doing a lot of work um, getting the uh, Appleton scan for the Institute of, I'm uh, doing work for the Institute of Science also, so he's been doing a lot. Um, now, as far as publicity, you know we've had recently just a tremendous amount. I mean, everybody's mentioned some of the things that's happened in the last week. 
And the promo from Channel 3 mentions media all of the time. It's one of the towns that they're visiting. So we're getting uh, a lot of PR from that. Uh, the, the Daily Times did something about the concerts. And um, the only thing is that they meant they said Thursday for July 4th. And it's really Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, but even that mistake is good, still good publicity. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Um, I was really surprised on, let's we'll see, last Friday morning. I'm watching early in the morning. And there is Tori at Bittersweet. And the, the media uh, theater is just, they're just bragging about the, the uh, video that uh, it's, uh, three did on them. So they're happy. Everybody's happy. Things are going as well. And that's everything. All right. Well, thank you for the summary. Um, I did. I'm sorry. I did have one comment. Um, uh, Mary, Mary reminded me that you said Channel Six will be there for July the fourth. Yeah. <coughs> Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie is uh, putting out a press release uh, Tuesday, day before, and Six always shows up when we remember to do it. And the years when I forgot. So that's why Stephanie's there. Okay. So anyway, so we will have yeah. publicity at the July yeah. fourth. And, and I should say, uh, three and its affiliates, because you also have the, the local, what is it, the call numbers. But um, yes, Bill. So there will be a presence of the July 4th on the new shows. OK. OK. Any other questions or comments for Councilman Dixon? No. Here we go. Uh, we have a, we, have, we offer the opportunity for all assembled but for their comment. Um, wishes to come forward at this time and there appear to be no takers so uh well, i will entertain a motion to adjourn is there so a all right all so in favor aye aye those opposed <coughs> all right good night folks see you next month